The day we're taking a look at these NCAA B matches, which are happening on Monday, January 10th, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Five plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 500 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Illinois Chicago vs IUPUI In the Illinois Chicago 90-72 loss to Wright State, the Flames couldn't overcome losing the battle of shooting percentages, as they hit 47.0% of their 60 field goal attempts, compared to 60.0% for Wright State. From behind the arc, the team attempted 29 three-point shots, connecting at a rate of 45.0%. One factor contributing to the defeat was the Flames' inability to take care of the ball, losing the turnover battle 12 to 8. Wright State also managed to out rebound Illinois Chicago, coming down with 31 boards, compared to 22 for the Flames. The Flames are unlikely to finish in the top half of the Horizon League this season, but they at least have enough to handle an IUPUI team that is number 355 in Ken Palm. Yaklik is a well-regarded coach who will get this program turned around soon enough, and the Jaguars haven't shown offense to compete against anyone at this point. There's at least a decent level of shot making for this UIC offense that has been particularly effective in the paint against lower-ranked opponents, with Griffin starting to stand out as one of the more efficient players in the horizon. Compare that to IUPUI, which has a horrendous 41.1 effective field goal percentage for the season, and also turns it over at the highest rate in the entire nation. It's a little easier to trust the upside of the UIC defense, after Yaklik developed stingy units as an assistant to places like Texas and Michigan, and the Flames allowing the third lowest rate of three-pointers in college basketball, gives them a good base to work with. Our first betting pick is UIC-7. It hasn't gone much better for the Jaguars against the spread at 3-8, although they covered against Wright State to snap a five-game run of failing to do so. Overs are just 1-10 for the Jaguars, with a lone over coming back in that December 21 game against Marhead State in an 82-50 loss. This is the worst offense in all of college basketball, with IUPUI ranking dead last and scoring at 50.8 points per game, on ugly shooting splits of 43.2% from 2 and 27.1% from 3. IUPUI has at least been solid on the defensive side, allowing 64.6 points per game to rank 87th nationally on decent shooting splits of 48% from 2 and 32.4% from deep. Our second betting pick is under 125.5. Quick reminder, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Five plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 500 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. San Diego vs Pepperdine. San Diego is a team that has to play good defense to win, as they are a lower scoring team only averaging 67 ppg. Marcellus Erlington, 13.3 ppg, is one of only two players for the team averaging in double figures, only scored 9 points in the last game, and in the last two games has totaled 23 points, wherein each he failed to shoot over 33.3% from the floor, Jace Townsend, 11.7 ppg, has been cold, as of late only averaging 5.8 ppg over the last four games, where he has shot 22.6% from the floor. On the season the Toreros are 2-4 on the road. The Waves got exposed by Gonzaga, but that is not surprising. The Bulldogs have that impact on most teams, but this is a team that struggles to score. In fact, both teams do. These teams are struggling to score, but both have success in one area, San Diego from three-point range and Pepperdine from the free throw line. Our first betting pick is San Diego Toreros at plus two. The Gonzaga Bulldogs scored over 50 points in both halves, dominating Pepperdine 117-83. The Waves shot very well, hitting 42.7% of their shots, but they simply could not stop the Bulldogs who hit 45 of 83 shots, 54.2%. Houston Millette scored 21 points to lead Pepperdine. San Diego is 289th in points per game at 67.0, and 40th in points allowed per game at 
They are 186th in field goal percentage, 44.3%, and 220th in free throw percentage, 69.3%, but have been great in three-point percentage at 36.8%, 56th overall. Marcellus Erlington leads the team at 13.3 points and 6.1 rebounds per game. Jace Townsend is second at 11.7 points per game and is hitting 46.7% of his three-point attempts, but he is out with a hand injury. Terrell Brown Soros leads the team at 7.9 rebounds per game. Our second betting pick is over. Oregon State vs. Oregon. Oregon has been a below-average offensive team, but they played well against a weak Utah defense. The Ducks shot 56% from the field overall, including 53% from long range. They could have been better from the charity stripe 9 but that didn't factor into the final. Leading their attack was Will Richardson, 13.6 ppg, who had 26 points, while Jacob Young, 10.1 ppg, had 22. The defense was strong as the Utes shot just 40% from the field overall, including 28% from long range. Oregon is 197th in the nation in scoring at 71.2 ppg, and it is no wonder they struggled at the free throw line, as the Ducks are 316th in that department, 65.7. On defense, the Ducks are 241st in defensive FG% percent overall, and 126th in points allowed at 66.7 ppg. The Oregon State Beavers are 3-10, 1-2, this season, and have won their last two games. Oregon State is coming off of a win against Utah by a score of 88-76 in their last game. Oregon State shot 55.7% from the field and forced 20 turnovers in the win. Gerard Lucas led the Beavers with 25 points and 6 rebounds in the game. Oregon State is averaging 68.8 points per game and is giving up 72.4 points per game against, while also averaging 32.3 rebounds per game and 12.2 assists per game. Gerard Lucas is averaging 13.8 points per game and 2.3 rebounds per game, while Warith Aladish is averaging 11.8 points per game and 6.5 rebounds per game for the Beavers. Oregon State is shooting 45.5% on field goals, 67% on free throws, and 31.5% on three-pointers. The Beavers have won two in a row, but they were against weak competition and not like a team they will face tonight. The Ducks are 8-6 on the year and have done that against the 50th-ranked schedule in the nation. OSU has played the 64th-ranked slate of games, but they have gone just 3-10 in those games. The Beavers have not played well against solid teams at all this year, and Oregon can be considered a good team. The Ducks have solid edges on both ends of the court, especially on defense, where they have allowed just 66.1 ppg overall, while the Beavers have allowed 76.2 ppg in their last five games. Our first betting pick is Oregon minus 4. The Oregon State Beavers started their season with a win over Portland State, but then went on to lose their next 10 games in a row. The Beavers have bounced back to win their last two in a row, so could they be on their way back to respectability? I'm not sure of that. In their last two wins, they beat Nichols State, and they followed that up with a win over a Utah team that is just 1-5 in league play. The Beavers have faced the 64th toughest schedule in the nation, but their three wins have been against the 297th, 191st, and 111th ranked teams in the nation, according to Ken Palm. They are not really resumed building wins. The Beavers have not played since December 30th. Oregon has been a below-average offensive team, but they played well against a weak Utah defense. The Ducks shot 56% from the field overall, including 53% from long range. They could have been better from the charity stripe 9 but that didn't factor into the final. Leading their attack was Will Richardson, 13.6 ppg, who had 26 points, while Jacob Young, 10.1 ppg, had 22. The defense was strong as the Utes shot just 40% from the field overall, including 28% from long range. Oregon is 197th in the nation in scoring at 71.2 ppg, and it is no wonder they struggled at the free throw line, as the Ducks are 316th in that department, 65.7. On defense, the Ducks are 241st in defensive FG% percent overall, and 126th in points allowed at 66.7 ppg. Our second betting pick under the total. Disclaimer, no financial advice, the information on this channel is provided for education and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information contained in or provided from or through this channel is not intended to be and does not constitute financial advice, investment advice, trading advice or any other advice. The information on this channel and provided from or through this channel is general in nature and is not specific to you the user or anyone else. 
you should not make any decision, financial, investment, trading or otherwise, based on any of the information presented on this channel without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or financial advisory.